Yep, that's right. Sex drive plays a huge role in how we gain body fat, how we lose muscle mass, along with four other biofeedback markers that I'm going to cover next. That's right, sex drive along with four other biofeedback markers are hugely indicative of what's going on underneath the hood in your body hormonally. And I'm going to show you today how to use these biofeedback markers to help you progress in your training for strength, hypertrophy, and body fat loss. Before I get into this video though, be sure to hit the like button on this video, subscribe to the channel, and if you're interested in my coaching services, go to the description and hit the link in the description. But let's get into it. So first and foremost, I use this system with my clients to make sure that our body is feeling good as we are getting into shape, okay? Typically, if one of these biofeedback markers are off, sex drive, mood, energy, appetite, or digestion, something underneath the hood hormonally is going wrong and we need to find the root cause of that. And that's what I'm gonna help you do today, okay? So in the description as well, you can download your free biofeedback marker. And what you do on this system is, it's rated between one and five. And you're gonna do this anywhere from three to seven times a week, okay? So one to five, five being great, one being awful. And what you're gonna do, you're gonna rate these, okay? And what I want you to think about is, okay, so if my sex drive is low and it's not good, it's a one or a two, then what hormones are probably off in my body that could definitely help me progress in my training, whether it be hypertrophy or strength? So typically the, mo the hormones that are most associated with sex drive is gonna be testosterone, DHT, and estrogen, okay? And if the sex drive is low, then we have to maybe look at, with a further blood test, um, if, if food and some lifestyle adjustments can't adjust it, that maybe testosterone and DHT are off, or maybe even estrogen in some women's cases with PCOS and things like of that nature. But, but what I want to focus on is, okay, so DHT, if that is low, and we're actually seeing some studies now that DHT is, is more correlated with muscle mass increase and strength gains than testosterone actually is. Um, so we have to make sure that these hormones are in place. Let's go on to mood now. So if the mood, say the mood is like a, a two or three, it's always hovering around there, there's a, a large amount of evidence showing that we could be facing thyroid disorder. Why is thyroid important? Thyroid is, is gonna be like your, your main fat burning system in your body when it comes to what's called T3 and T4. And these regulate your body's temperature, this regulates your body's uh, metabolism as I just said, and also re regulates your body's heart rate too, okay? So if all those things need to be in order, for you to be a fat burning machine, so to speak, to make sure that your body is burning fat optimally. If not, we're gonna have a really hard time losing weight. And as you can see by the arrows, all these play a huge role in one another. And I will get more into that in just a second here, okay? The next one being underneath mood. mood uh, leptin, leptin, okay? So this, this is also correlated with it too as well. So if our mood is off, our mood is low, leptin may also be low as well. Why is leptin important? Leptin is a hormone that's stored in fat cells. This gets released and this helps to regulate our body's homeostasis. So basically your body's settling point. If this hormone is not at an optimal range, they're gonna definitely have a hard time losing body fat. So you can see if mood and how all these things here, and I'll leave links to the studies in the description for you guys too as well, how these hormones can play a huge role in keeping us from losing weight. So you need to be in a great mood or at least in a decent mood while you're losing weight or some other things could be going on but we'll get more into those details right ahead here. Energy, so energy, not only is that gonna be correlated with food, so your digestion, it's also going to be correlated with maybe you might have too much cortisol in your body. Cortisol is a stress hormone. Uh, if we have too high cortisol in our body, we're definitely gonna have a hard time losing body fat, or we may even gain weight, and we're probably definitely gonna have a hard time with our sex drive too as well. So these two go hand in hand and they, and they play off each other in a lot of different ways. Appetite. Um, appetite is mainly controlled by a hormone called ghrelin. Ghrelin is going to help with your satiation with your body. And these two hormones, ghrelin and leptin, have like a, a irreverse relationship, okay? They're, they're going to play a, a role in how you feel with your appetite over time and also how hungry you're feeling. And there's a couple different ways and practices that I'm going to show you just ahead here on how we can dictate and, and manipulate these things to work in our favor so that we can lose body fat, we can gain that muscle that we all want, okay? And the last one but not least is digestion. Digestion, and like my other video, I'll put a card up here too as well. I'll talk about the microbiome just a little bit, and I'll go into a deeper video of that in the future. But 
Um, this is basically your gut health. Um, and there's a lot of things that if your gut health isn't on par that um, can go wrong with your body. One could be food utilization, us utilizing the, the food in our body. Another one big one could be leaky gut and that could lead to a whole lot of other things in your, in your body that's going to not only affect your mood, your, your, your appetite, your energy, um, but it also can lead to some, some negative consequences in, in the future for our health. Okay. Um, but so these are the five biofeedback markers. I just want you guys to give you guys an introduction on why these are important, how they all, you know, mood and sex drive, how they both have a relationship with each other, sex drive, and energy, energy and mood, mood and appetite mood and digestion how they all play on each other and why they're important hormonally and why i use it in training with clients now the next thing i'm gonna do for you guys i'm gonna show you how if one of them are low some things that we can do to get them back in a healthy range okay okay so now that we got all that good information about how all those indicators play a huge role of what's going on underneath the hood let's talk about some ways that we can actually change and alter these things to work in our favor to help with our training okay all right so sex drive so there's a couple things we need to look at um, when it comes to sex drive uh, we need to look at, okay, how are we sleeping? Is our sleep habits and our sleep hygiene good? Meaning like, are we turning off our phone at a decent time? So we're not getting the type of light that's going to affect our sleep, that blue light. Um, are, are we even turn off the television? All those things that are going to affect sleep negatively. Are we getting enough sleep? We need to look at, okay? So if we increase sleep, that might be one way that we can help increase uh, uh, testosterone or DHT in our body to help get us back in a healthy sex drive. Zinc, anywhere from 15 to 30 milligrams a day. And some ways that we can do that, we can eat oysters or beef. We can have real chocolate, which also have other things that can help naturally boost testosterone. We need to limit our alcohol consumption and we need to minimize stress, okay? So these things are gonna help to overall put our body back into a healthy sex drive way if our sex drive is low, which can also mean in our testosterone, estrogen, or DHT is low, okay? All right, next one, mood. Sleep, again, sleep is gonna be really, really important for all these different factors, but this is gonna be one of the most important ones when it comes to mood. Make sure we get enough sleep. Are we consuming enough omega-3? So are we getting enough salmon per week or eggs that are, you know, have a high amount of omega-3 or are we getting it through some other source? Uh, we need to limit our caffeine intake because it's gonna have a negative role on our digestion, uh, which can play a huge role in lowering our mood. Uh, we also need to increase our vitamin D, okay? So if we're not getting enough vitamin D through our diet, if we're not eating dairy or something like that, then we need to maybe look at supplementing some vitamin D, okay? Energy, again, sleep. Sleep is gonna be hugely, hugely important. Um, and what you can see is, is that it seems like you probably need to have a good lifestyle in order to get all these things uh, to play, play a factor in our roles, from our nutrition to our sleeping habits um, and to our stress too as well. So keep that in mind, this all comes back to lifestyle too as well. Um, complex carbohydrates can also help increase energy. So uh, sweet potatoes, um, oatmeal, things like that. Um, maybe our diet is just too uh, too low on those kind of complex carbohydrates, and we're having too too many quick or fast acting carbohydrates, the sugar based ones. Okay, um, B vitamins, which are also going to be plentiful in some car complex carbohydrates too. Appetite and digestion. I put these together because these play a hand uh, in each other and they play a huge role together. Uh, soluble fiber. This is a form of fiber that helps with prebiotics, so it helps with your gut health. Um, uh, probiotic foods, so that could be yogurt, that could be sauerkraut, or you can even supplement with a probiotic. But I also, I well, I always like to recommend that you get it actually through your food because you're going to get other micronutrients that are important. Water, water is really important. Uh, just making sure that everything's smoothly and uh, uh, running smoothly through your digestive tract and you're well hydrated. Uh, vitamin A, D, and E. You can get this from nuts, carrots, sweet potatoes, salmon, and egg yolks. Okay, so. The whole thing that I want you guys to focus on is is making this stuff, uh, you know, thinking about it bigger picture, okay? So if one of these things are off, what are some things that I can do um, to get it back in the right order to make sure that my body is in the most optimal position? And and let's be real here. I think a lot of times that we don't talk about is like what is a optimal body fat, all right? Um, and what I mean by be real is because the leaner that you get, man or woman, um, these things are going to go to the crapper, okay? So for men, it's typically gonna be anything underneath a true 8%. Like it gets, things get pretty rough and no matter what you really tend to do on those things, you're really just kind of like, you're fighting a battle that's uphill. Uh, for women, you any anywhere from underneath 16%, it's typically gonna have that same effect. So what I want you to focus on is like, if you're looking to optimize your performance and also look great, meaning like you have separation between your muscles, you know, your abs are in, you know, you, you look great, you feel great. Typically for men, that's gonna be anywhere from like 10 to 14%, depending on the person. And for women, it's gonna be anywhere from like 16 to 21%, uh, give or take a few percentages. Uh, but those are realistically gonna be real uh, body fat percentages that you'll feel great um, and you also perform great too as well. And that's my T3 method is getting you there in that, in that uh, right perfect body fat percentage to, uh, with also optimal performance. 
be sure to hit that like button subscribe to the channel and if you're interested in my coaching services check out the description and be sure to download your biofeedback tracker in the description too as well and you guys have a great day and any more videos that you guys want me to cover hit it in the comment box and i'll be sure to cover that for you